Another heart-racing week of college basketball. We've got upsets, we've got big-time games, and we've got one team that just ends years of frustration and disaster with one victory, and they're not even a Division I team. We're breaking that all down coming up next on Midnight Madness. Let's go! Welcome back to the Kitchell Sports Network, the newest edition of Midnight Madness, and it actually, it truly is Midnight Madness. I'm looking at the clock right now, it says 12.02 a.m. here on the East Coast, so it truly is Midnight Madness tonight. Robbie D back here with you for another great week of college basketball, breaking down the best week in college hoops, and like I said before, we've got some great games and some great upsets, and one game at the end we'll talk about at the end that you're going to want to stick around for as we had a, a win for... I guess the ages, a win for the decade, you could say, uh, for one team out in California. But before we get started, follow me on Twitter, Robbie D. Kitchell. It's now public, so if, even if you don't want to follow me, you can still see all of my comments, all of my tweets, but you should still follow me anyway. And then tune into Game Time Sports with JB and KB. Link's on the bottom if you want to tune in. So uh, bear with me a little bit. I'm facing a little bit of a scratchy throat. But again, j just like last week, what I'm doing here, no shot sheet. I got box scores. I got the knowledge of college hoops in the old noggin here. We're going to run through all the highlights that I have coming up. We're going to start out in Austin first. Texas, you know, they were a team that was fighting for a number one seed. They did this last year. You know, they were number one team in the country. A lot of people were high on them. Then they go out and lose at Texas, or I should say they go out and lose at Nebraska. Then they go out and lose at Colorado. Now they come home to play Kansas State, a team that has been up and down all season long, but it appears that Jacob Poland and the Wildcats are peaking at the right time. So a good matchup between two good teams in Kansas State. They need all the road wins they can get. Let's see if they can get one in Austin as they take on the Texas Longhorns. Get pumped up, getting ready before the game, before the action. First half, the freshman Tristan Thompson throwing it down, big man, throwing it down. Texas up by two at the break, but that lead, uh, they would evaporate very quickly, all in part due to Jacob Paul. And look at this guy, just drive the lane. You know, he was suspended for part of this season. A lot of people throwing him back into the player of the year talk. Uh, completely agree with that. Kansas State was up eight at that point. Now they're up by three until Rodney Magruder starts finding the range. Had a team high 22 points this sophomore. One of four guys in college basketball that's 6'4 or, or less that actually averages over five rebounds a game. On this play, though, Jacob Pullen drives the lane, goes down hard on his right hand. As K-State's up by seven at this point, he'd be taken off for an injury, but he's a basketball player. He's a tough kid. He comes right back in when the Wildcats need him. And what else does he do? He comes up with a clutch basket, puts it up and in. K-State, big road win for their resume as Frank Martin's Wildcats, like I said before, starting to peak at the right time, a 75-70 win. Out to Lexington, where John Calipari was getting his Broadway on. He, he was, look at him, he's dancing, he's, he's showing us all the hand movements, and now he takes Brandon Knight aside and says, look, here's how you're supposed to box out. Here's how you're get, supposed to get your bottom into another guy. He did that all night long. Uh, trying to, you know, he's got a young team. He's got to teach the kids some things. Kentucky takes the lead on this basket with three to go with Darius Miller. They're up by one, under 30 seconds to go. Festus Azili loses it underneath the basket. Josh Harrelson gets the ball back, and UK has the lead by two. 4.2 seconds left. All they need is inbounded, and they're gonna win it. Well, Terrell Jones, a catastrophic mistake, travels. So 1.1 seconds left, a lob to the basket to tie for Azili. Doesn't come through, and UK, another unbeaten season at Rupp. Uh, what can you say? It's one of the best home courts in college basketball. Kentucky, a 68-66 winner over Vanderbilt. The game of the week, though, was in Tallahassee, North Carolina, and Florida State. Six minutes to go, North Carolina. Looks like they're going to put this one away as Harrison Farms throwing it down with a one-hand flush. Tar Heels up by seven, but under two minutes to go. Things begin to get interesting. David is Dukies for three. Florida State down by three. Now Derwin Kitchen. We, we've mentioned him before in this program. Deck takes down to one point. Now FSU's up by one. Harrison Barnes. Ice water in the veins. And the heels bench is pumped. 
three seconds to go. And look at that clock. It didn't actually start on time. Doran Kitchen missed a shot anyway. But North Carolina, another team that looks like be peaking at the right time. But it's they set up a huge matchup this weekend against Duke and Chapel Hill for the ACC title. But we want to get to Harrison Barnes, the freshman at the start of the season, was an All-American as a freshman. Hadn't even played a game yet, but he showed us his clutch size. He's been knocking down clutch threes with under 135 to go to against Florida State, Miami, and Virginia Tech, and UNC ended up winning all of those games. You know, LeBron James maybe should take some notes from the young kid, Harrison Barnes, from Ames, Iowa. Out to Seton Hall, where Johnny's Lavin's Johnny's, they were gonna, they were in for the fight of their life. Jeremy Hazell, 9 of 14 from three-point range, finished with a game-high 31. Johnny's, though, like we said before on this on this program, they've shown that they can be a home team, but they're also turning into a road team. Dwight Hardy with the lay-in, he had a team-high 23, but Seton Hall, here's a basket from Jeff Robinson inside from Herb Pope. This is where the Pirates began to really stretch it out and stretch away from the Red Storm. Here they run, and Robinson up and in with the lay-in. Seton Hall's up by nine, and then Steve Lavin, the, well, the hinges begin to come off as he goes on a tirade against the official. He tells him to get lost, and he leaves the arena as he gets tossed, and then a scary moment at the end uh, where Justin Burrell, it's this, you know, this play is not needed in college basketball. St. John's just begun, began to lose their composure towards the end of the game. Didn't matter. Burrell would be tossed. Seton Hall a winner, 84-70. Always tough to win at the Prudential Center when you're facing Seton Hall. Penn State and Ohio State. Nittany Lions never been a number one team in Penn State. They just can't seem to beat Ohio State, so uh, that, that's a bad combination. And especially, it's never good when you're talking about a guy like John Diebler who starts finding the range early in the game. And, and during this broadcast, we're going to go ahead and refer to him as Threebler. He wears double threes on the back, but he had eight more than the, the, the double threes that he had on his jersey. There he buries another tray. Buckeyes are up by 13. Make it 16 as John Diebler. Why do you leave the kid open? He's got a great stroke. And the Buckeyes, well, just when you thought Diebler would stop shooting threes, he didn't. He kept burying them from the outside. As Ohio State, they're up by 15 at recess. Uh, on to the second half, and it's more of the same. I mean, when we said John Debo would be a part of this highlight, we meant it. Look at him go step back on David Jackson right in his grill. The Buckeyes are up by 24. And then Debo, oh, one more time for good luck. 30 points, a career high 10 for 12 from three-point range. So Ohio State wins by 21. And then the game we want to talk about, Caltech against Occidental. The Beavers hadn't won a conference game in 26 years. That was until this past week. As the Beavers celebrate a 46-45 victory. Let's party like it's 1985. As you see Caltech run, rush the floor, it sort of looks like they don't really know how to, how to rush the court. They don't know how to celebrate. They haven't won in 26 years. They haven't won a conference game in 310 games in the Southern California Intercollegiate Athletic Conference. What a great victory for the Beavers. You know, this, is, this is the pure beauty of college athletics at its finest. You know, they, they, this school has produced 31 Nobel Prize winners, no professional athletes, but who cares? This is what college basketball is all about. The Caltech Beavers, their first conference win in 26 years. Congratulations to Caltech. A great victory. A, 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 an absolutely astonishing accomplishment when you think about it. Again, they hadn't won in the last 310 games in conference. They hadn't won a conference game in 26 years. Just incredible streak that they were on, but it's over. It's ended. Caltech, congratulations. You deserve that victory more than anyone. Well, when you think about it, I don't, I don't know anyone else who has a 26-year losing streak in their conference. But uh, great for them, great for the Beavers. Hopefully they can start getting their program back on the right foot. I mean, they produce Nobel Prize winners. They produce guys who walk on the moon. They produce rocket scientists. I mean, you think they could win a basketball game every now and then. They're 5-20 and 20 now. So, again, congratulations to Caltech. I can't stress that enough. That's the end of the week. That's the end of March Madness. Or that's the end of Midnight Madness, I should say. I, I, I have March Madness on the brain. We're a week away from Selection Sunday, but we'll have Another Midnight Madness chronicling the best of the weekend in college basketball. It's conference championship week. We're going to cover it all here on Midnight Madness on Sunday. So keep it locked here on the Kitchell Sports Network. Have a great weekend, everyone.